Okay, um, a couple things from the last video, uh, last couple videos. I should have these up one more because there's actually four villages. For some reason, I was counting three villages. So they should be up there. Um, well, actually, yeah, yeah, they should be up there. So there are four villages, so they should have started out with four, not three. And then other things in the game happen to make them go down one cent in value. So that's their proper spot. That's, this one was already correct, okay? And the other thing is a small thing. This is actually, uh, kids should start at a village if they have one at their household, no matter what. <clears throat> so I was ex that was from uh, the first edition where they would start at the household. So they always start at the village. <clears throat> if there's more than one village, uh, there's different procedures to go through to, to pick the village. Um, and it's debatable which one is better, all right? Because this is better for kids being more active, but it also can be um, a negative... A negative thing for them because they may have to pay rent or something like that but usually those kids are you know they're kind of secondary players anyway so those are the only two th corrections that I had from the first two videos now um, I can get started on April 1990 so we're gonna do parental disasters four for um, Elliot Household. Then we move to the Adams household. Six. Um, nothing, because they are they are strict, but they need to go one through three. Okay, now we have something here. Um, this is the Goldstein household. They roll a two, so now we got to roll for what kind of parental disaster. And somebody's grounded, so now we roll for each kid. First, we'll start with Goldstein. Are, they're both Goldstein, Reginald, and then my, and Eric. Okay, five. Uh, whoever rolls the lowest, ten. So Reginald, not Eric, is going to be grounded for this turn. He's currently in Ducktown, so we take him away from there and send him back to his house, lay him on the side to symbolize that he's grounded. Okay, the next household is the Hirolito household, here this red house. They are strict, so they need to roll something higher than a three, which they do. The next one is Vanderbilt. This is a nice household, so they will only have a problem if they roll a one. They're safe. And then the final one is the Peterson household, who are strict. They roll a one, so we got to roll to see what happens. Four. Um, where'd that manual go? It's a loss of, off the top of my head, I can't believe I can't remember this. This is, you know, this winter I was playing it, autumn and winter I was playing it enough I got the rules, I pretty much remembered everything. But after just playing a few months, I start forgetting things. But I know nothing happens in this case, I just can't remember which one it is, which I should definitely know. And I should also definitely have the, the manual handy because uh, Something like this might happen again, but I'll just have to cut the video short if something does happen. So we're good with that. So now we can start the turn. Um, do I want to change my opinion of somebody? Because remember, I'm playing as Shane Elliott. I got lucky with that roll. Another thing I realized with Shane Elliott is he can attack, so I can actually take down Peterson's prestige, because uh, I'd probably win the battle. I'm not going to quite do something like that yet. Oh yeah, that's right, he also has to pay me rent. Um, he's not able to do that because he has no more coins left. So basically I can evict him right now, but I'm going to be nice and let him stay, which will, he will improve his opinion of me now since I do that. So we'll take one of his tokens and we'll put it on mine and it goes from five to six. So now his perception of me is 6 plus 3 divided by 2. So he's still not going to accept my currency. But he's close. Because so he has to be um, 
you have to consider the decimal point in this situation. So the, it's going to be 4.5. So if I can get it one more, he's going to accept my currency. And that's going to boost the value of my currency. Okay, so now um, it's going to be my turn. And I'm going to... Wait, first we're going to make sure no one else is paying rent. No, no one else needs to pay rent because no one else has any shops. So now um, Antonio Adams is going to roll to see what he does. He's going to do a two. He's going to issue currency. Okay, now I should. I did briefly look over the manual, but I didn't read enough. So I can't remember. I think that he doesn't. I'm pretty sure he does not print currency because he's already printed 10 and he still has 10. So if he had less than 10, then he would follow that roll. But since he doesn't, he, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Okay, so now we can move to the next household. Um, he's grounded, so he's not moving. So now we go to Eric, and he's going to roll. Where is Eric? Okay, he is in Houston right now. Eight. He's going to lounge. He's not going to do anything. Which brings us to Phil here, Alito. Let's see what he does. Two, he's going to trade. Excellent, that's good for me. Because he's going to purchase. And I did I did look at the manual for this, and I was thinking that maybe kids don't spend their USD on shares, but I didn't see anything like that in there. So I think maybe it was something I was thinking about and I didn't implement. So he's going to pay me one, one cent. Um, my shares in Moon Company are going to go down to eight and then he's going to go up to one so right now in this game it's actually a pretty bad idea to invest in most companies moon company maybe but you definitely don't want to i don't think you want to spend your coins but i the reason being is that the reason being is that these villages are mostly in stern households and the chances of companies being successful there are very low. This is the best chance of companies, uh, a place for companies to um, grow. And even that, that's not even, that household's not even nice. They're uh, in between, they're medium or moderate. So if you're gonna invest, it would be in this, in, in this company, Moon Company. But having said that, it really, it's questionable. You don't. You probably don't want to be using USD. The only time you want to use USD is if there's um, a really good company that's you know is probably going to do good, and that's probably going to be at a nice household. So maybe there should be a rule like that where um, the NPCs don't pay coins. But that's that's a that's a small thing to fix. Okay, so. Um, in this game, like I say, I'm going to dominate this game easily just because I, for one thing, I got lucky with the kid I picked. I, I uh, was successful in getting that. And most of the other kids, except for Antonio Adams, aren't that good. And even Antonio Adams in this situation, um, he's probably like a second or third place player in this current situation that he's in right now. So this should be a really easy game for me. So, okay, we're done with him. Now Lacey here, Lido, is going to go. <clears throat> But it, it will be a good game to... She's going to lounge, by the way. It will be a good game to me for me to get reaccustomed to this. I'll try to start playing this a little bit more regularly so I can actually remember the rules to my own game. Okay, now um, Jake Peterson here. He is going to roll. <clears throat> Three. He's going to socialize. Where is he? He is <clears throat> right here in Shackle. I should probably know that. <clears throat> So my perception of him is um, 2 plus 7, 9, divided by 2, 4.5. So in this case, you round it to 5. So he needs to roll a 5. He needs to roll a 5 or lower to be successful. If he's successful, my opinion of him goes up. If he's not successful, it goes down. So 5 or lower. He rolls a two, so my opinion goes up. Now what happens here, this is actually significant, 
because I think I did, did I, for, yeah, I forgot to lower my opinion of him, which is my fault, so we'll play it like this. So, now my perception of him is, te is five. So that means my villages, anything I'm, a I'm uh, in charge of, any villages I control, go to um, accept his currency. So we're going to take his currency and put it up here. And this is going to be temporary because I'm going to actually change my rating of him next time I'm able to. Um, but this is good to show the process. So Shakala now accepts the currency, which increases his currency value from three to four cents each so from my mistake if I would have played if I would have been paying attention I would have um, lowered my opinion and that wouldn't even matter so now I'm gonna have so now potentially he could if he printed any currency which he didn't so it's not gonna affect anything he would be able to spend his currency in my village and that would be bad for me okay so now we are done with April 1990 and we go into May 1990 and I'm kind of debating whether I want to look around for that manual. Or not. Oh, wait, I think I see it. I think I see it. Just hold on a second. Yeah, I got to actually, maybe this week I'll order the new one. Because this thing's falling apart anyway. Okay, so now I have that just in case I need it. And who knows, the information in there might not be accurate. Okay, so let's... We're in May now. So let's... Um, do parental disasters. Nine at Elliot. Now we're at Adams. Three. They're strict, so something is going to happen, possibly. Uh, nothing will happen. Six. Because there's no company there. Okay, then we go to... Okay, we can also put him back... Standing straight up to symbolize that he's possibly in this game unless he gets grounded again. Or this, this month, I mean. Three, so they're strict, so something might happen here. Nope, nothing won't happen. Okay, and then um, here Alito. Two, something might happen. Nope, nothing. There's no air uh, shops there. And Vanderbilt household is good. And then Peterson. Last one. Nothing. Okay, so now let's go to our turn phases here so I can get this in proper order. Parental disasters, loan payments, and there's no loan, rent payments, and evictions. Again, he has to pay rent. He can't afford it. I'm going to let him stay. That means his opinion of me is going to go up. Now, this is important because his perception of me has just went from 4.5 to 5, which means he now has to accept my currency. So, um, it's going to, gotta get my currency here, uh, yellow. Ducktown is now going to accept yellow currency. And that brings up the price, the value of yellow currency up by one space. So now it's going to be two cents each. <laughs> so now it'd be a good time for me to possibly print currency to issue it. Whether I want to do that or not, whether it matters because I'm going to easily dominate this game, I don't know. Um, now, there is another thing that I may have been forgetting. Currencies. Where is it? Let's go over currencies for a second. There's kind of quite a bit here. Okay, so for each village that starts accepting currency, okay, that's basic. A village will accept the currency. Yep. Okay, coins are accepted everywhere. Any transfer currency, uh, one transfer. Huh. I was thinking that, again, this might be from the first first edition, that whenever a kid accepts or stops accepting a currency, that affects the other kid's opinion. Um, so for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to have to look into that, but I don't see it in the currency section here. 
So that's not really going to change much in the game anyway at this point. But it would be good to know. All right, so next up is um, players can alter their opinion of one kid by one in any direction. And this is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to lower my opinion of him. So this time I remembered it. And his opinion or his currency will now no longer be accepted at my village. That means the value of his currency is going to go down to three cents each. Okay. See, now technically in the first edition, I know for a fact that would make his opinion of me go down, which would also impact my currency. However, that may have been changed in the second edition. I'm going to have to look into that. So we'll just leave it as is for now, since I didn't see anything directly in there about that. But we'll check it out later. Okay, so that means it's my turn. What did I do last turn? Um, did I even move? Do anything? I think I, like, skipped my turn last time, didn't I? Attack trade issue? Yeah, I think I did. Oh, well. Oh. I'm just making all sorts of mistakes. Okay, so it is my turn now, and I am going to um, attempt, I think I'm just gonna work. I kind of want to, I'm just gonna work, so this is gonna bring up, see this is kind of risky actually, because like I say, it's not a, it's not a friendly household. So I could easily have this wiped out but at this point, I might as well just do it. Another option is to try to build another shop because there is room for one more in this village right now. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to get this net worth up. And also, if I can get this over 10, then they have to pay me two cents per share if they want to buy it from me. But that might be a while before that happens, I'm sure. So this, this, this might actually not be very profitable for me doing this. But nevertheless, I'm going to do it this turn. Next turn, I'll try to, I'll probably start trying to build again, which is what I should have done before. Okay, so Antonio Adams is up. Four. He's going to trade. Okay. Now here, um, he can use his currency to trade. So this is ideal. This is the situation you want to be in. You want to be able to buy shares with currency. So each one is worth um, plenty right now, three cents, so he can easily afford it. So this is going to go down to nine. So we're going to go over here. It's down to nine. He's paying directly to me. So we're going to take his currency, put this next to mine, and I'm going to have one gray currency. Now my shares in Moon Company is going to go down to seven. And his is going to go up to one. Right there. Now it might be a good idea for me to kind of redesign this so that it's wider. Because what happens is... Most people have one or two shares and it gets really congested around here. So I might um, have a bigger mat in the future. I'm not sure. I'm going to I'm gonna have to think about that. Okay. Um, so that's it. So now he gets to retain his USD for his final score. So that's one big way that being able to print currency or having currency, if you're able to get it in certain situations, will help you. Okay, so now... Reginald Goldstein is going to move. Eight. He's going to lounge. This time, Eric Goldstein. Three. He's going to trade. So now he's going to buy a share. Because like I say, Moon Company is the only one right now. This is what happens when you get a bunch of bad players. Is that the human company is going to dominate easily. So my um, chairs go down to six, and Goldstein, where is he? Or Eric Goldstein. Yeah. 
So see what I'm saying? Everything's getting congregated over here. So I'm just going to put this like that. Other than that, this works pretty well. Other than that aspect. Okay. Um, so he now has a share. And see, the, these guys, they, they're in a big house. So they're, they could just sit around and they're going to rank fairly well in this game. Because there's not much competition. But however, I'm easily going to get first. I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cents. So I'm easily in first place. I'm beating everyone by more than twice as much. But it, but when you have a harder competition, which usually happens, usually at least have some competition, other kids are creating companies and they're attacking you. It gets really messy. This is a very, this is actually... I think probably the easiest solo game I've played so far. So this doesn't happen very often. But hey, I'm going to take the win. It'll help my ELO ratings a little bit. Okay. Um, Eric Goldstein just went. Now we're to Phil Hirolito's turn. Nine lounge. Okay. Like I say, Bad players that are lounging around doing nothing. And that's what they did in real life, too. Seven, lounge. Okay. Uh, Troy Vanderbilt. It makes the game a lot easier to run. There. Travel. Okay. So he's going to travel to where he has the most shops. He doesn't have any shops. So he's going to travel to where he has the most friends. He doesn't have... He doesn't perceive anyone as being their friend. His friend. So he's going to go to a random village. We'll start with Shakala. You roll for the household, but since each household in this particular game only has one village, it doesn't matter. So we'll do Shakala. Wait, where is he at? Yeah, he's in Houston. Okay, so he's going to roll for Shakala. Um, let me try not to leave out a village this time. The next one, Highland. One. And then Ducktown. He rolls a ten. He's going to Ducktown. Okay. So Troy Vanderbilt is now in Ducktown, and Jake Peterson is now going to roll. Six. Attack! He's going to attack me! Since I'm the only one at the household, he's going to attack me, unless he perceives me as a friend, which he doesn't. Which he does not. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen in this is my perception of him is going to go down, and that's just perfectly fine with me because I was going to take it down anyway. And actually, this is good for me. Because I do want him to attack me. Because the chances of me winning are high. Because his fighting is 4. And mine is 7. And that will increase my prestige. Which will make me further dominate the game. People will accept my currencies more. Okay. So he has to roll a 4 or less to be get a successful hit on me. He rolls a 5 so he does not get a successful hit on me. Okay. Now I'm going to strike back. And I need to roll a 7 or less to get a hit on him. So if I get the hit, I win this battle. Seven or less, I do it. Four. So excellent. So everyone hears that I just beat him up. So his prestige goes from seven to six. And my prestige goes from three to four. Okay. So if I can get that up one more, I'll be able to um, all the other uh, places are going to accept my currency. Oh yeah, and I also should, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I did leave Highland out of the count for who, who, uh, currencies they accept, so I should probably put this there. Okay, so Highland accepts those two currencies. <clears throat> oh, I also forgot to mention that when I was doing that share, um, you can pay in any currency that the village accepts that you're at. You can pay for the share. Okay, so um, the battle's over. Let's check... Um, people, okay, so people's are still going to have a higher, five or higher perception of Jake Peterson, so that's not going to change his currency situation in any other village at the moment. But if he keeps that kind of behavior up, it is going to affect him. Okay, so that ends May 1990, and we go into June. Now, June's interesting because people can attempt to explore uh, and try to find new areas. Oh yeah, one thing about the areas is when I when I was getting mixed up on the vocabulary. So in in the game, an area is called a property. 
in the video game. Okay, and in the video game, um, it's still a shop when you convert the property, when you improve the property, it turns into a shop. Okay, so the reason why it's called areas in this game is because, well, the tabletop came be, came, the tabletop game came before the video game, and I originally called them areas. Now, when I built the video game, I'm like, you know, area is not the best word for it, so I'm going to go with properties. So then, um, when I released the second edition of Neighborhood Conflict, I was too lazy to, um, as you can see here in Ducktown, I was too lazy to change that from starting areas to starting properties, so I just left it as that, and that is why there's a difference between areas and pro in the terminology areas and properties between the tabletop game and the video game. Okay, so, um, plus, originally when I was making the game, the tabletop game, I was trying to abstract things, so there could be a case, I don't know, in, his, in the real historic sense where it wasn't necessarily a property, but they, you know, something like that. It, it's, it's hard to explain. Okay, so um, we are in June, and like I say, people can explore now, and NPCs will explore if they roll for something that they can't do in June. Um, now, regular players, they must choose to do that instead of doing another action. So that's how that works. Okay, so we're going to do parental disasters first, starting with the Elliot household. Nothing happens. Uh, Adam's household, nothing. Goldstein. So I mean, we'll start breezing through this since I've explained it pretty well now. Three at Highland, at, um, not Highland, at the Here Legal household. So they potentially have something going on here. Nothing. Okay, now Vanderbilt. Nothing. And Peterson. Nothing. Okay, excellent. So now we go move on to the rent payment and evictions. I'm going to let him stay here. Um, so his opinion of me is going to go up even more. As we see Jake Peterson on the Elliott uh, piece. Okay, um, then we have players can alter. Now I'm going to start altering my opinion of Antonio Adams here. So, oops, that's so my opinion starts off at five of him. It's going to go down to four. All right, that's it. And then we can start the actions phase. So it's my turn. I'm going to attempt to explore. Now how this happens is I got five exploration. I need to roll a five or less. So I don't have, I, I have a 50% chance basically of finding another area, a.k.a. property. All right, I got it. Nice. So I must take my starting areas here is two. So that means it's going to go up to three. So basically you just take this and you put that up there to symbolize that there's now three areas in Shakala instead of two. That potential. That means uh, two more shops can fit in Shakala at the time being. And the maximum areas at a village is going to be nine. Well, actually, no, that isn't true. There is no maximum. It can go up indefinitely. I mean, it's not going to get that high, but very rarely anyway. But yeah, you, you can, I take that back, you can have uh, infinite, potentially infinite amounts of areas at a, at a village. <clears throat> okay, now... Um, I might be wrong on that actually, but I think it's infinite. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like, even if you p play the full game from eighty-eight to ninety-seven, I've never seen it. Actually, it could. I have. I, I. I. I don't think I've seen it, but it could actually pretty easily happen at what like a village of Calum or something because it's already has a lot of starting areas. <clears throat> but I've never seen it be an issue where a kid had more than nine at a place. I've never seen that. Okay. So anyway, we'll move. We'll move on. Um, Antonio Adams is at Houston still. He's right there. He's going to roll. Four. He's going to trade. He can do that. Now, here's where he could potentially profit because he's going to be able to take this. Oh, wait. It's, yeah, I did my turn. I tried to explore. 
So his is gonna his uh, gray currency is gonna go down to eight. My gray currency is gonna go up to two because he's buying the share from me. This and my shares go down to five, and his go up to two. So now he's in contention to become the president of Moon Company. So basically, that tells me I need to stop. I need to stop um, building this company up because I'm probably going to lose it. And I won't have that many shares in it. It's just going to be helping someone else. And when he takes it over, if he takes it over, I don't think he has the ability to raise this net worth to over 10 cents. I don't think he's going to be able to do that this game. I could be wrong. <clears throat> Simply because he's at a strict household. Now, if he moves to Shakala, maybe... But he's just not in a good situation to do that, so I'm not too worried. So once he takes that over, I'm going to be profiting, you know, I'm going to be collecting all those coins, and then I'm going to buy, um, I'm going to buy, or I'm going to start a new company when I'm able to, when I'm able to. Okay, so the next person that's up is Reginald Goldstein. He's just going to allow, no, wait, 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 he's going to travel. Okay, so like the, the sequence of events is uh, where he's got the most shops, nothing. Where he's got the most friends, that he, people that he kids that he perceives as his friends, none. So he's gonna go to a random place. We got to do four rolls now because he's not currently at one of the villages. He's still back at his household. Two for Shakala. Nine for Houston. Eight for Highland. And one for. Ducktown, good call on that. You don't want to end up in Ducktown, but then again, you don't really want to end up in Houston either. Okay, um, that brings us to Eric Goldstein, who is also at Houston. Five, socialize. So who does he have the highest perception of? Um, he has the same perception of everyone here, I think. Yes, he does. So we're just going to roll um, whoever rolls the most out of the two kids that are there. That's Reginald, rolls a real one. And then um, Antonio rolls a two. So he's going to socialize with Antonio. Now, Antonio's perception of him is four plus seven. No, five plus seven. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So he needs to roll a 6 or lower. Which he does. So Antonio's perception, or opinion, of Eric Goldstein goes from 5 to 6. Okay. Um, next up is Phil Haralito. 8. Lounge. Nothing. Lacey, here we go. one, she's going to work. Where is she? Okay, so she is at Highland. Now, she's not able to build, though, so that's the problem. So when you uh, try to work and you can't, or the NPC, I mean, if the NPC works and they can't, but they can build, then they can, by default, they're going to attempt to build. That's a way to boost the NPC's uh, abilities and... It does make them quite powerful sometimes, but in this case, it doesn't matter because she can't do that. She can attempt to purchase, but there's no shops here to purchase, so that's not going to happen. So she can't do that, which means um, she's going to attempt to explore. So her exploration is one, so she needs to roll a one or less. She rolls a ten, so she's not going to, she is unsuccessful in her exploration attempts. All right, so then we move to Troy, Troy Vanderbilt. Let's see what he's going to do. One, he's going to work. Now, where is he? He's out here. So uh, normally, to work in a, at a Stern household here in Ducktown, you need to roll a one or less. But NPCs, they have a bonus. Again, this there's a few things to give NPCs bonuses to, to make them challenging. And usually, a few of them, per, like one or two of them at least, are challenging per game. 
but this game, it's their situation is so bad it doesn't really matter, but they get to roll a 1 or 2 in a, instead of a 1, where a regular player has to roll 1. So, 1 or 2, and then if he if so, he'll be able to build. Oh, he rolls a 2. So this has a lot of impact here. So he now has a shop. And the person, the kid with the most shops at a village is the chief of that village. So he takes over this. That means we have to readjust any currencies. And I don't think that's going to change anything. Actually, yeah, that is going to change things because um, it's going to take away my yellow currency out of here because his perception of me is below five. So that's going to go down to yellow or go with the other yellows and the yellow currency is going to go down one space in value so it's now worth one cent each and I didn't even print any yet so so that's not good for me maybe I should go and attack a duck town now <laughs> but I'll let him do that and he now controls that so Jake Peterson has lost his village at least temporarily and now it is Jake Peterson's turn. So let's see what he does. Two. He's gonna trade. He can't trade. He doesn't. He didn't print any currency or issue, I should say, as the term in second edition. And he has no USD to buy anything, so he can't do anything. But that means he's gonna attempt to explore. So his exploration is three. So this happens at the village you're at. So he needs to roll three or less. He rolls a seven, so he doesn't. So that ends June. And we go into July, and we can end the session.